Hello, my name is Car Dr. Carl Hansen. I'm an in adult infectious disease specialist and I'm the director of the Hospital Infection Control and Epidemiology Center. Uh, and I've been asked to do Ask DMC questions. All right, so the first question is, how likely is a, a person to get COVID-19? Well, it has to do with a lot of things, really. If you live in the National Capital Region, you are at higher risk because 60% of COVID cases are in Metro Manila and uh, NCR. And then if you live outside of Metro Manila, then siempre lower risk. Within Metro Manila, there are also places where there are higher cases. But in general, we already have community transmission, no? sustained community transmission of uh, COVID-19. So the best thing to do really is to just make sure that you protect yourself. You've heard this over and over again in media, you know, in Viber posts, hand washing, physical distancing. Make sure that you wear a mask when you go out. You, we also want to protect the vulnerable or high-risk groups or the elderly, those with comorbidities, etc. So. Uh, those are the things that we can really do to protect ourselves. If you get into close contact with someone who's sick, you know, someone who's coughing and sneezing, then yes, that could be COVID, but there's no need to panic. You just need to see your doctor and let them know about what happened. There are rumors that COVID-19 is airborne in hospitals. So is it safe to go to hospitals? Yes, it's true that there are procedures done in the hospital and in clinics that can generate what's called aerosols. No? So the main mode of transmission of uh, COVID-19 is droplet. So your saliva, your cough, you produce tiny pieces of saliva that contain the virus. And that's what's called droplet. However, there are some procedures like, say, when putting a tube down a patient's throat for, to help them breathe, no? or maybe a dental procedure where the patient coughs out with a mouth wide open. So those kinds of things, those are called aerosol generating procedures. And it's been demonstrated that with these AGPs or aerosol generating procedures, the virus can stay suspended in the air. And that's the reason why in hospitals, there's special protection that needed. But otherwise, you know, in the house, in the community, we only really need to worry about droplet precautions or droplets, meaning the saliva that really falls to the ground within about three feet. And also uh, what's called fomite transmission. So when the saliva drops to your hand or to a table and someone wipes it and wipes his nose, then that can also transmit the virus. So that's the main mode of transmission. So uh, the question is, there are rumors that COVID is airborne, so yes, it can be airborne in specific situations. Is it safe to go to hospitals? Of course. Most hospitals, including Medical City, have made preparations such that there's an area that's safe for other patients and then area that uh, takes care of COVID. In Medical City, we have uh, two systems. In one, hospitals. In this system, we are doing our best to physically separate the accommodations and the offices that take care of uh, COVID patients and also those who have uh, general medical problems. No? So we are working on that and actually it's, it's always been in place. No? It's just that we are fine tuning the arrangements now to make sure that when you come to Medical City uh, and you do not have COVID, then you are completely safe. Um, the third is, is it, is it safe to go to TMC if I am ill? So this is related to question number two, no? So yes, it's very safe to go to Medical City whether you have COVID or you don't. We have a screening procedure at the, at the entrance of the hospital. The guard will ask you to wear a mask whether you have respiratory symptoms or not. And then the guard will also ask you whether you have fever, cough, uh, shortness of breath, etc. If there are signs or symptoms that you may have COVID, then you will be directed to one part of the hospital where you can be assessed and we can take care of you to make sure that you don't go into the complications or just to really test you for COVID. No? And if you don't have respiratory symptoms and you, you look okay, 
then um, you can proceed to go about your business. You can do uh, outpatient laboratory tests, you can get your ECG done or go to the diabetes center. We are doing our best to separate those two populations. So yes, it is safe to go to Medical City if you are ill. I have a scheduled doctor's appointment. Should I be worried about getting infected with COVID-19? We all need to be very careful about COVID-19. Like I said, this is now community transmission. No? And you can get COVID anywhere, whether in the grocery or uh, in the office, etc. But in general, the you know the way to just avoid getting ill is to protect yourself by doing hand washing and etc. So, if you have a doctor's appointment and your doctor does go to clinic, and um, pretty soon most doctors will go back to clinic, you no, know, so it should be safe to keep your appointment with your doctor. Um, you don't want to postpone getting medical care, especially if you have a pretty urgent medical condition. No? So it is safe to keep your doctor's appointment. We are doing our best to make sure that when you come to TMC, you will be safe. Should I wear a mask in the hospital or clinic? The government is asking us to all wear a mask, whether we're in the clinic or not. In the medical city, we have made it a policy. If they don't have a mask, they can't, they can't enter. You should bring your own mask when you come into Medical City because it keeps you safe and it keeps others safe as well. What should I do if I have a cold or flu symptoms? Okay, so there are many, many different reasons to get the flu or, uh, or colds or cough. Right now, the most popular and the most common is COVID-19. But you still can get the regular influenza, you can still get the regular common cold, etc. No? So it doesn't mean that if you have a cough or if you have a cold or you feel you know, sick with fever, um, it's already COVID. We do need to test you for it. You can come to TMC, we can evaluate you. What will happen when you arrive is we will bring you to an area where you can be evaluated properly and then get tested for COVID. It doesn't mean automatically, Shempre, that you have COVID, but we do need to test you and we do need to take the necessary precautions to protect our staff as well. So you might get a little scared that they're wearing costumes, you know, those face shields, etc. But it's really just to protect our own staff. And then once we get uh, your result, we will discuss the results with you. If you have respiratory symptoms, we'd like to keep you either in the hospital or uh, in a quarantine facility. All right, what is TMC doing to protect patients? Well, for one, we have instituted a universal mask wearing policy. Even our own staff and employees wear masks when they go around the hospital. And it's been shown really that masks are enough to protect ourselves from COVID. And then, of course, we have that two hospital in one system that we already discussed. We also have designated areas uh, for patients who are suspected to have or who already have COVID. You know, and we have prepared those units to make sure that uh, we, we drastically reduce the risk of uh, COVID uh, spreading to the rest of the hospital. In the non-COVID units, you know, the staff are all, we're also wearing some form of protection. They're wearing masks. Some of them will be wearing goggles. They will be washing their hands very well. And all this really is towards uh, making sure that our patients are kept safe. We have uh, amped up our capability for, for hand washing, so we've installed more alcohol dispensers. They are automated now, so it will be easier for you to get some product on your hand without actually touching the dispenser. So that and many more things, I think, they are all geared towards making sure that our patients are protected. Uh, is TMC testing patients and staff for COVID? Okay, yes we are. Uh, Medical City is a level 5 accredited facility by the DOH and the RITM. Uh, there are several other private institutions who do testing. Uh, Medical City is one of them. We do still also follow the DOH recommendations about expanded testing. So you can't get tested just because you want to because at the end of the day, testing capacity in the entire country is still limited. Uh, the whole country is trying to get to 8,000 tests per day, but we're not there yet. So we want to test those who are at highest risk for COVID and also those who are symptomatic.
we have also started testing our uh, frontline healthcare workers. So these are nurses and doctors in the ICU, in the ER, in the general nursing COVID floors. No? So even if they don't have symptoms, we've started testing them. And then for those who are positive, then we will ask them to go on quarantine. So yes, we, we do test. One, one of the unique features of Medical City is we have also partnered with several local government units because we want to make sure that we help those who you know, don't have as, as easy an access to testing. So we're helping out Pasig, we're helping out Palenzuela, and uh, I think more, most recently we're helping out Antipolo with some of their samples. Is TMC a COVID testing center? Yes, uh, TMC is a COVID testing center. The results that we release are as good as the, the results of, of RITM and the other government units. And, and this is really to make sure that people who need to get tested can get tested and they get the results in a timely manner. And I think it has to do with the next question as well. Number 10, how long does it take for results to come back? Once we swab you or get a sample from you, the turnaround time is usually 48 to 72 hours. Uh, we And we try really our best to, to stick to that turnaround time. There may be some glitches, especially if there are sample issues, etc. But uh, Medical City Lab does its best to release quality results free of error. And that's why we need to really painstakingly make sure sure that when we release the results that it's it's accurate will the pneumonia and influenza vaccines work against covid okay so influenza vaccine is a vaccine that's given yearly um, because the flu virus changes every year uh, the pneumonia vaccine is um, there are two kinds pcv 13 and the other one is ppsv 23 i'd mentioned brand names but rather not there's uh, pneumonia vaccines and influenza vaccines. They work against different bacteria and viruses. So the pneumonia vaccine takes care or covers you or protects you from the most common cause of pneumonia, which is, which is a bug called Streptococcus pneumoniae. And uh, the influenza vaccine works against flu. So it does not work against coronaviruses or uh, COVID. No? But why do we still recommend them? Will it work? So it doesn't work. No, it doesn't. But we do still recommend the pneumonia vaccine, especially for those at-risk groups, so the elderly, the immunocompromised, etc. They do need to get their pneumonia shots. And flu vaccine, everyone needs to get it every year. We need to get it because you don't want to get two infections in one. You know, it's bad enough that you are at risk for COVID and there's no vaccine for that yet. But if there's a, if there's a vaccine against a virus that can protect you from it, and you know, if you get COVID and you get influenza, kawawa ka naman. So you still need to get pneumonia and flu, but it will not protect you from COVID-19. Finally, are antibiotics effective against COVID-19? They are not. Uh, antibiotics by definition, uh, or at least the way we regular or usually use the term, they, these are medicines that will kill bacteria. They will work against bacteria, not against viruses. So you shouldn't be taking antibiotics to protect yourself from COVID. There are uh, situations, however, especially in the hospital for some of our sicker patients where we do need to give antibiotics for patients with COVID because we are suspecting that they may have a secondary bacterial infection. But that's really the only reason why you should take antibiotics. All right, so I guess those are all the questions. The main way to protect yourself is to make sure that you wear a mask when in public. Um, you also need to wash your hands very well and frequently. We also advise to practice physical distancing. You need to keep one meter between you and the next person, whether that person is coughing or not. And uh, it's best if you also do this at home you know, because most of the transmissions occur at home. So you still are able to afford some protection between the household members if you also practice uh, physical distancing at home. Many doctors have gotten sick with COVID and you might have heard that some of them got sick because their patients did not inform them of their risk factors. You know? So when we see patients at clinic, we always expect that patients tell us the truth because we cannot help you if we don't have the complete information. I know that COVID is a 
very scary disease. When you talk to your doctor, you really need to be truthful. I don't need to cite the Republic Act that uh, mandates you from doing it. No? But please, when you, when you talk to your doctor and you think that you might have COVID or you have respiratory symptoms, you need to be very truthful so that your doctor will be able to fully help you and fully help you immediately rather than risk both of you uh, becoming sick or worsening. Um, I guess that's it. No? So, uh, I hope you learned a lot and uh, thank you for uh, watching.